Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. Hi, everybody, and welcome to today's episode. This morning, I am waking up in Colorado Springs, Colorado, and I'm on my way to Florence, Colorado, where the entire town has basically been converted into a bunch of antique stores. Now, it's a Monday, and a lot of these shops are kind of like open either Tuesday or Wednesday through Saturday, or the, some of them might be closed today. But I'm gonna go see what I can see, and I'm gonna take you guys along for the ride. If you've never been out that way, you'll get a chance to go visit with me, so let's go. I don't know why I said this way. Let's go that way. <laughs> And I've arrived in the pretty little town of Florence. It's a pretty and nice old fashioned American Main Street, lots of cool historic buildings and you're greeted right away with this really neat shop. They've got a Model T truck sitting out here, sign proudly displaying that they've got antiques and collectibles. So let's do a little walkabout and see what they have. I'm gonna peek in this truck. <laughs> little two seater, wooden cab. Pretty cool. I bet they have neat stuff inside too. Oh look, it's wire wheels off a Jag. Those are Jag XKE wire wheels just hanging out there with red line tires on them. The splines look all right. Heck, that was if that was at home, I'd be. Uh, Pretty interested in getting a set of those. It's always good to have an extra set. What are they asking for them? 500 bucks for four. It's not too bad. But sadly, we got real no great way of getting those home today. Let's go in the shop. Hey, when you walk in the shop, they've got all these great showcases full of jewelry and toys and special sort of rings and cups. All sorts of great stuff. It's uh, a feast for the eyes, even just the minute you walk in here. That's kind of a cool thing right there. That is a little uh, Shuko variant set. I actually collect Shuko stuff. And that's got the original box and the two vehicles that go with it. Mm, boy, oh boy, I might have to talk to them about that. Oh, they got another one down there too. I might be in luck for some things that I buy here today. Well, we'll keep on walking. If I'm lucky, I might find another cool vintage watch. When we were at the uh, flea market, lucked out and found a neat one there. We've got old signs, like the Coca-Cola sign there. Might be a replica. We do have some watches in the showcase, but not terribly old. Some neat lighters. Adam City Manufacturing Septic Takes. And you've got one with a girl on it there. Ronson pen lighter. Well, I have a feeling I'm gonna be in this shop for a little while. Around every corner is something kind of cool and kind of neat. Little toy cars, those look like Hallmark ornaments. More old fashioned lighters. I always look for those. You find them with the old sports teams on them or um, car manufacturers. They're quite collectible. Cast iron toys. Neat little uh, salesman sample stove, crescent stove. Those are always really neat. There's always something cool to see in a little antique shop like this. It's just a matter of whether you find something that you like. And already I have. Well, they have quite the collection of antique snuff bottles. Um, Sometimes snuff, sometimes actually uh, even a little bit smaller than this would be opium bottles. Asian, very ornate. Those would be 1800s. Buy all and get 50, get half price. Well, that'd be a big expense. As it looks like they have them marked about $80 a piece, but it looks like they're motivated to see them go. 
There's a cute little turkey dish, $18. Fun to have it on the table on Thanksgiving. Jab of the hut, we got some toys and stuff mixed in. It's a fancy old teapot, that is. Not for sale. Well, I guess it figures, you know, you gotta have a few things that you like. You keep around the shop for yourself. Melikalikimaka. A Hawaiian Christmas coconut, all painted up. We were just there, we were just in Maui. Beautiful place to hopefully get rebuilt soon. Looks like they've got some fur trading or traps and pelts, stuff like that. They come around the corner. Comic books down on the ground there. We got some records. Campbell's kids. There's a collector for just about everything. These are really ornately carved. Um, stone Asian statues. I've had some of those in the past. They're pretty nifty. Yeah, I'm going to move along into the next section here. What does this say? Scout Ranch. ESA. A little military helmet. It's kind of cool. So as I'm looking around and chatting with the gentleman that owns this building, he told me that he came here about 10 years ago to Florence and was homeless, living in the back of a truck. And he saw that this space that I'm in was boarded up and he saw opportunity and he knocked on the door and asked if maybe they'd give him a, an opportunity to rent it and fix it up. And he did. And he found all these showcases for free around town. And then he started renting them out to vendors. Well, now he owns this store and another store turned his life completely around. It's just an amazing story to hear. Um, success is waiting for you if you're willing to pursue it. And that's just what this gentleman did. So I'm going to see if I can find something in here to support the business. I am sort of browsing at the back of the shop now because I am inquiring about the Shuko toy sets I saw up at the front, which are right up my alley. And uh, we'll see if we can, it's a vendor's item. So we're gonna see uh, what the price is on them and uh, maybe what we can do. But in the meantime, I'm looking at all this cool stuff. There's uh, Amberola Records for the uh, Edison style gramophones there these little reels they have the grooves on the inside and you put it on a sleeve and oh, sorry grooves on the outside you put it on and the needle goes around saw one of those machines for sale at the denver flea market the other day for a hundred dollars which if i was back home i would have bought because it's a really cool piece oh here's stereograph cards and sometimes the image on here is really important um i had a series from the civil war which actually showed the battlefields um, oh, there's there's one right there, actually. That's not Civil War, though. That's uh, World War One. it looks like, based on the uniforms. But it's um, military and historical pictures are the ones you want to look for. Um, they're a little bit more rare. So out of that batch, that this is probably the best one in here for $3. As opposed to the, you know, milkmaids and whatever other pictures they have. This looks like she just beat the heck out of this guy. <laughs> eavesdroppers dropped yeah she dropped him <laughs> that's funny and there's the there's the stereoscope viewer too so 55 dollars it's not bad i mean there was a time those were much more but the interest in that kind of stuff has waned a bit in the older items that's the one thing with antiques and collectibles is that it really can shift but i think there'll always be an interest in things like cool slot machines what are they asking for that twenty eight hundred dollars yeah it's about what they're worth Neat piece. I'm going to check up front and see how he's doing. Okay, success. I was able to uh, make a deal. I'm actually just paying full price, <laughs> but I ended up buying these two Shuko sets. I'm not buying the cars. Uh, they're priced separately. I have a ton of the cars at home, but what I don't have are the sets to go with it. And now I will. So just down the street from where I picked up the Shuko sets, which I've set on the counter, um, Larry, who's the uh, purveyor of these fine operations <laughs> and uh, entrepreneur extraordinaire has invited me down to a shop that uh, was closed up and we're gonna have a look around. Now, you said, Larry, there was some am amazing piece of history. Yes, or... in fact, uh, if you look in the center, there's a Chinese wedding bed, also known as an opium bed. Oh, geez, an opium That's bed. That's phenomenal. That's a real Wild West piece of furniture, that is. That is really authentic and it's valued, as you can see. $10,000, 28 grand. But we'll, we'll wait for an offer. 
I imagine anything over 7,500, the lady would be happy to. Wow. Accept. Where on earth did this come out of? Where would you guys find There's an opium bed? This lady had it in her home in Colorado Springs. Okay. And her name was Lou, last name Luba. She was real nice. And that was inside her house. Yeah, she was using it actually. Boy, we had to take it all apart. It was a, quite a job to get it back together. Oh, I bet it was. <laughs> Lots of intricate panels all and stuff. Pieces. Now yeah. you said that you you had cut a hole and discovered there was a basement all under here. Over here, yeah. Well, Did you? Was there anything cool hidden down there? Or? Oh yeah, we call it deals in the dungeon. Deals in the dungeon. Okay. <laughs> and if you come down here, we'll have you take a look. Oh okay, yeah. This is where we we save the boards. Right. Where we cut it because the landlord said we may have to put it back. But this was a full basement not being used before. Yeah, so I ended up getting it rent free. Oh, well, look at these great stones. Yeah, this building's very old. Yeah, all from uh, the area. Yeah, no, Say mined and quarried. Now that's a, that is a basement. Yeah, and there are thousands of items down here. I see this. Wow, you've got it jam packed. That's oh, all the way to the back where there's a man cave. I love an antique store with a lot of stuff in it. Because there's lots to see. And I appreciate he's running ahead turning the lights on. Yeah, that's the way you can see everything. No, I, I appreciate that. He said so I can see everything. Glassware. You know, I am keeping my eyes open for a Pyrex warmer for that special Pyrex dish I've got. I still haven't found one of those yet. Some vintage clothes down here. All sorts of stuff. Uh, now, of course, I'm curious to see what you guys put in the man cave down here. So. Oh, it's the hodgepodge right now. They're still working on it. Oh, but I it's see. so much. Wait, the man cave, <laughs> it has ladies' fur coats. I guess I'm out of fashion. I'm not wearing the, the right styles. <laughs> well, we have something for everybody's orientation. Yeah. <laughs> and I see the, it, this is why it's called the man cave. Yeah, There's a couple bench grinders some, there. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I see some coca-cola tumblers and glasses and duck decoys john deere tractors the cast probably was his mozart yeah but that's the thing you know you got to search the basements the attics the underbellies of places quite literally today to see what they've got because you just never know what might be hiding on a shelf uh, if somebody likes this painting we'll work a deal oh you're ready to see it go to a new home yeah, that's pretty nice. Is it dated? It looks like it's probably from the 1900s, something yeah, like that. I would say. And if somebody has $75, they're going to get a good deal. Well, there you go. Nice. It's worth it even for the frame, you'd think, at that yes. price. Yeah, all of our stuff is priced to sell. You can get through here and see the many, many pieces. Now, I was told the other day that these tiles are from the Van Briggle fa factory. Oh, that looks like yeah, um, yeah. early Dutch American. Uh, uh -huh. Isn't this cool with the marble tile? That the is really cool. Board. Yeah. But I wonder, yeah, I wonder if they did uh, repurpose those tiles. That looks like uh, I went to the Metropolitan Museum in New York, and they yeah. had that sort of tile was around the Dutch uh, settlers' fireplaces. Yes. Uh, very similar kind of thing, but very cool, very neat. And then over here, you can see that there's an old. Uh, Oh, yeah. Garment that was framed, but look at this. Yeah, somebody did a nice job of... Uh, From China. That's yeah. probably... I don't think it would fit me, though. <laughs> I'd be able to get one arm through it. And of course, you can't see these bird's eye maple pieces, but they're all jammed up with stuff. Well, so what What? Uh, what piqued your interest in antiques? What got you started? Um, well, I was working as a registered nurse in a hospital. My great aunt paid my way through nursing and she collected antiques. Okay. And as I looked at her collection, having lived in Taiwan and Hong Kong as a missionary's kid, I liked Asian things. So I started out with Asian things and I was selling them in my home at night to doctors. They spend as much as 20000 out of time purchasing things that I brought in from China. So you figured, heck, this is a good yeah, like business. Good. So I quit nursing in 1983 and went full-time antique shops. I started over 350 people in the business in California. I've had seven antique malls, 9,000 square feet, 5,000 square feet. Sold those and came to Colorado and started all over again. And it's uh, it's in the once it's in the blood, you can't get it out. Yeah, it's an addiction for sure. It is. I, I have that same problem. It, we're hoarders in a sense, but we... We sell our stuff so we can hoard more. The, yep. and get better. <laughs> that's 
That looks like an old billiards trophy, where, yeah. which I have pool champ, 1956. And check that table out. That's from the guy that you bought the shoe coal stuff from. Oh, he's got the same thing. So he's got some interesting taste in... Uh, yeah. Well, I'm glad that you got the business running and uh, glad that you were able to kickstart things again, even uh, a decade ago. Right. You know, from feeling things were a little low and then getting back on your feet again. It was a miracle. Well, Going it's... Going from bankrupt living in my truck, looking at that building on the corner, I said, someday I'm going to own it. And now I do outright. Wow. Well, can... And all this collection of various people's things, they all pay either commission, 30%, if they don't rent. And if they rent, 12%, and their square footage is a dollar square foot for rent. Well, there you go. It's so very reasonable. Well, beautiful. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. I, I'm going to keep having a look around here. But it's always yeah. nice to hear the story of how somebody got into this line of work. And usually there's, uh, you know, a good story behind it. I feel I might look upstairs and see what you have. Sure. I'm always looking for uh, right, nice... Um, if you have people that love male nude art, I have over 100 paintings. Huh? Some of them, people are so famous, they're in the Smithsonian. That's very interesting. Yes, yeah, so it could give you a look at that. What about that? I do collect um, uh, old wristwatches, men's wristwatches, um, toy cars, obviously, things like that. So we'll, we'll have a little wander about upstairs okay. and see what there is. Sure. And with that, success. I end up with a couple cool box sets for the uh, Shuko cars I have at home. And I uh, got to see some interesting sights. Yeah, I'm going to put these in the car and continue on. So make sure to uh, stay tuned, subscribe for more episodes, and as always, guys, bye for now. Bye, everybody.